From a little-known island in the Canadian Maritimes and a town in Western Ontario, God raised up Albert Benjamin Simpson to lead a global movement. Born of staunch Presbyterian parents, he was baptized as a baby with a prayer. May the Lord make the wee lad a great man of God who would impact his world for Christ. Truly a prophetic prayer. Brought up on Reformed theology and stern discipline, young Bert longed for peace with God. After struggling for months as a teenager, he read words in an old book which gave him hope. The first good work you will ever perform is to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. He fell to his knees, took God at his word, and believed on him as Savior and loving Heavenly Father, thus beginning a journey to follow God wherever he might lead. He entered the ministry at age 21 in Hamilton, Ontario, following graduation from Knox College. In Louisville, Kentucky, he began preaching evangelistically for people to be saved. And there he died to ambition and pride and was filled with God's Holy Spirit. God's next stop for him was New York City and the 13th Street Presbyterian Church where he served rich and poor, Italian immigrants and Wall Street bankers. There he edited the first illustrated missions magazine, The Gospel to All Lands, which broadened his vision of the spiritual poverty of people the world over. Miraculously healed in August 1881, he followed the pillar of fire and resigned his well-to-do New York church, becoming an independent preacher at the Gospel Tabernacle. Powerful preaching, remarkable healings, and ministries to the needy of New York and beyond fleshed out his fourfold gospel and bring back the king theology. Realizing the need for more workers in more places, he founded the Missionary Training Institute, soon sending scores off to the regions beyond. At the 1887 Bible and Missionary Convention at Old Orchard Camp in Maine, he founded the Christian and Missionary Alliance. Ten years later, more than 300 missionaries labored in Africa, the Middle East, India, the Tibetan border, China, and Japan. By his death, his legacy was assured with more than 100 books published, a missions magazine that informed and inspired generations, the mobilization of men and women called, gifted, and sent out, a missionary training institute that fast-tracked workers to the world, a Christ-centered message and a Great Commission-driven mission, churches planted in Africa, Asia, and South America with many thousands of members worldwide. Almost a century before the Unreached People Movement, Simpson already was targeting the world's most unreached nations. Today, at this centennial anniversary of his death, the movement that he started numbers more than six million members in 88 countries. If he were alive today to see what has been done, he would praise the Lord. And if he knew that a book had been written commending him for starting a mission to take all of Jesus to all the world, that is still doing it even now, he likely would respond, you've got the wrong man. That wasn't me, that was Christ in me. While Simpson was sickly for years, imperfect as we all are, who struggle with pride, ambition, fears, and family problems, this unlikely founder of a global movement committed his life to the work of the Father, rested in the all-sufficiency of the Son, and tapped into the power of the Holy Spirit. And God did the rest.